as servants for Jesus' sake. So there are things within our experiences with God that are also very, very powerful. So, so I just want to tell us, I want you to tell us how you started. How did you start? I mean, what year was this? What were the dealings? Uh, did you start in a school? And what would that school be? Did you go to a theological seminary? So let, let's just, I mean, those brief background things, how the dealings of God with you started, and how you were able to arrest and maximize the economy of what the Lord was bringing to you, you know, in those days of your relative obscurity. Thank you. Very, very touching Please, question. can we give it a moment? Thank you. Okay, Thank yeah. you very much. Okay, so. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering what to omit and what to say because it's a very, it's a very pregnant I question, understand. but I'll attempt to just touch it quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that um, my, my call and my operation in ministries is quite a, a very unique and unconventional wow. one. I've, I've, I've always had the passion for the things of God. Yeah. I, I really have um, had that. I had the privilege of... Um, being raised by very godly parents, you wow. know. So I had that moral background right from... That was in what city? Joss. Joss, yes, okay, yes. all right. So, um, and coincidentally, my grandfather yeah. was um, the, the first president of what we call Cooking, Church of Christ in Nations. Oh, wow. Based, yeah, so... Um, so I had, I had uh, I would say that I have a rich heritage of that background and um, my encounters with God started relatively early but wow. because I didn't have an opportunity now I'm careful uh, these are very sensitive questions yeah, 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 but yeah. then I didn't have the opportunity to be exposed to the ministry of the Holy Spirit uh, the the cultural context uh, as far as Christianity was concerned yeah. placed emphasis on morality yeah. and all of that which was wonderful very good foundation yeah. But the opportunity for uh, the ministry of the word in terms of its accuracy and the spirit was not really there. So the, I had that, that privilege. And then um, I think the first, I would say, the first real preparation and encounter for ministry mm -hmm. happened under the leadership of a, um, a dear man who was my principal in wow. secondary wow. school. Yes, yeah, so it had... It was um, the the strange thing about it, it was that um, it was a very it was it was a very small school. Wow, in Joss. Yes, you know, right. Plateau State. Yeah, it was a small school, and so we were not so exposed. And the man he was an Anglican, an Anglican priest, wow. a reverend. Then he had spent a major part of his training time in the U.S. Oh, okay. So he came and um, he inculcated a lot of values, you know. Wow. I can begin to list so many things that he did. So he created that atmosphere. Okay. You can imagine being in an environment where as you're studying, there's a worship song playing in the background. Oh. Exactly. So he, in Nigeria. <laughs> you, you, can, you can tell. No, I, I, don't, I, I think it was, just, it was just his personal passion to train us. Wow. Uh, the credit should go to him. Well, He's was an old man. Was private now. school? Yes, it was. Oh, it was yes, it was. Okay. And and so we had that opportunity, and um, um, aside from the normal uh, subjects that we studied, yeah. I know that we studied a course called Honesty, Morality, and Conscience. Wow! You can imagine at that level, <laughs> and <laughs> and then we studied spiritual growth, and all of that. As so, part of the curriculum. Oh yes, absolutely. Wow. So we were taught to respect people. We had, we had encounters. It was an environment that allowed for a lot of spiritual expression. He wow. was really a father, a mentor. He really built us, even though he was with us for a very short time. Wow. But um, it, was, it was quite a great one. So I think I would say I really started from there. But then I started having lots of encounters from a very, very young age. Very young age. Yeah, I started having... Um, the several encounters with God. I started having angelic encounters. Now, at that time, because I did not have a system that would explain some of those things, wow. I thought everybody used to have those experiences. Oh, okay. You know, unfortunately, you know, it, it, it was as though it was everybody's experience. So I think that, that that's that's I would say those were the uh, the foundational 
moments and um, it was it was quite an impact on my life uh, what that man did because he really really mentored us he taught us a lot of things he created a devotional oh. himself wow yes and so corporately in the school we studied specific books at the same time so there's wow. no such thing as rushing ahead or behind you had to follow had to fast before the, the school resumed uh, and then wow. every teacher would have to pray before the lecture starts. Unfortunately, all of these things that I'm telling you died after one year. This wow. is so. This is the unfortunate part of it. But um, I hope that in the near future I would have the opportunity, if God grants, to build a school that resurrects that model again. Wow. It's it's my it's my dream to be able to come up with something like that, and let God grant us grace to give our children something from the heritage of that which we have so i think okay. yes so did you did you go to a seminary it was it was the school doubled as a seminary oh, yes okay, okay. Uh, if you have an idea let me use something in the military um you can go to nms okay while yeah. it is school you yeah. are still yeah, yeah exactly. so exactly. yes the goal exactly. it was a school that was founded by now archbishop um Benjamin Aga Kwashi. Oh, that's a yes, job. yes, the, yes. So it was, it was his dream, and he was a bit close to my dad, and he had a personal passion that I become a priest. You know, he just felt that it was a good thing, and uh, I'm still a priest. I mean, <laughs> and, and, uh, thank God. At least you are still a priest after the yes. other Mechizedek. Yes. So I wanted to speak to you, the impact of fathers and mentors on ministry, okay. on ministers. Yeah. That, as well, young minister, I know you didn't quite capture that yes. in this message. Um, one of the things people find difficult to, you know, our language in ministry is how, who is your father? How do you know uh, who is your spiritual father? And what role do they play? And of course, that of mentors too. And what is the difference between a mentor and a father? It's a very difficult question. I wish the answer were easy. It's difficult because um, fatherhood and mentorship is like a double-edged sword. It depends on how it is held. But um, I do not believe that anybody can sustainably rise, not just in ministry, in any aspect of life, if you do not have an opportunity and a platform to be guided and mentored by one who has gone ahead and has provided that the, the disadvantage of mentorship is that you will conform to the beliefs the mindset and also the limitation of the person ahead of you uh, which has played it you know so there is a balance um the concept of fatherhood and mentorship is it's not a concept that i've talked so much about mm -hmm. and i have my reasons for it mm -hmm. because um for those who were raised in the southwest um, most of the churches there were owned uh, do i use the word owned established by individuals so in terms of the responsibility of administration yeah. there was a single individual yeah. now the background that i came from did not allow that you understand it was an extremely conservative background so you only had access to a pastor for maybe two years at the max and he so within 10 years you would have six seven eight people so the idea was um i found it strange when i started ministry and i saw the the idea of mentorship and then fatherhood of course there are scriptures for it i'm not downplaying it but i'm saying that for someone who came from the middle belt uh, or not as many people would want to see it uh, it's not a concept that that is very easy with a typical middle belt and because wow. uh, the anglican context does not allow that kind of thing to be a pastor's son yeah. then automatically you have the opportunity or if you are privileged to have people who are close to you yeah. but it was not a normal thing to just have people easily who can guide you it was a responsibility left to your parents and left to your seriousness wow. If you were serious enough you would find a way to look for someone you know but then generally speaking um i believe in fatherhood i believe in mentorship um the most important thing in in mentorship is the ability to get the mindset and the information of the mentor uh, the difference between fatherhood and mentorship is that in mentorship the information is your goal 
but in fatherhood the relationship is your goal you can be mentored by a man's book tourship and then the 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 covering that comes under that and the privilege of that grace yeah. so fatherhood is is more pronounced for people who are actively in ministry as it were mm. business people don't talk so much of fatherhood they talk of mentorship mm. so i see fatherhood as a unique expression of mentorship uh, that provides guidance especially for people in ministry yeah. Yeah. Uh, you meet man and say who is your father it doesn't make <laughs> sense rather you say who is your mentor mm. and that is not it may not be limited to a person uh, there are many privileges of fatherhood um, the leverage that comes yeah. from their credibility and sometimes the blessings that come from that spiritual tribe you are connected to mm. and a lot of other things the opportunity to guide to counsel at a more personal level they are not just interested in dispensing information they give you an opportunity to see their scars to learn mm. and all of that so that is very important provided um provided the patterns are kept now i will quickly want to observe respectfully yes, that fatherhood when not guided mm. fatherhood does not just mean someone ahead of you no i believe the same way um you don't sit down and cross your leg and select an earthly father it is a connection that happens by grace Amen. yes most times in its original context from scripture a father is one who begat you in the gospel yeah. Yeah. that means one who gave birth to you in the gospel mm. but it's not always true pragmatically speaking because if you were born within a circle whose belief you no longer um you know or whose pattern is not similar you may have to trust god to get um mm. um you know all of that so mm. uh, and i also believe that there are requirements for fatherhood mm. and, and, and people it, it, age is not necessarily the proof of fatherhood mm -hmm. and being in ministry ahead of someone is not necessarily a proof of fatherhood mm -hmm. these are all that's why i said it's yeah, not a very yeah, yeah. many people have been deceived today because they had fathers and mentors oh. many people have been blessed today because they have fathers mm -hmm. or mentors now mm -hmm. let me observe if you lend me one more minute on yes, this issue yes, uh, i think that the fatherhood and mentorship system in africa requires respectfully speaking a total overhaul mm -hmm. Um, there is a very gross deviation from God's pattern. Mm. The idea of fatherhood in Africa, and I say this, I, I love the body of Christ. My position about honor to ministers and the body of Christ is one that has been established. So I speak from a standpoint of love and respect. But I think that um, the demands that, that the, the understanding of fatherhood and mentorship in Africa sometimes it means that you are in a position where you have no will of your own you are in a position where you must subscribe to the pattern that is given otherwise there is some cause or something that is waiting for you uh, there are there are financial remunerations that come that you are not necessarily in control of there these are excesses and um, some of those things are honestly insecurities from people yeah. that they just you know most people have been in bondage i've counseled people who because of fatherhood they can be told by a father relocate to another place is an instruction some maybe leave your wife is an instruction wow. there are people who the fathers demand details of their finance details of their private life with their maybe husband's wife wow. details of church membership of so these are excesses and so um it is not just enough to say i have a father or i'm a father or i'm a mentor mm -hmm. we must probe into the purity of what is happening there yeah. with reference to scripture mm -hmm. so this is my position mm -hmm. it is true that young ministers must be able to trust god to connect uh there are many people who are effective today because god delayed they are being connected to certain uh, people yeah. had uh, they been connected to those yeah, people yeah. earlier yeah. they would not be allowed the flexibility to obey god mm, mm. so it, it takes it takes a lot yeah. uh, and then of course um i think some of these threats that come there are people who began with individuals who help them like fathers and mentors yeah. but eventually probably they found out that um 
um, maybe nothing wrong exactly they just found out that look i don't belong to this tribe yeah. i don't connect to this grace yeah. i know that there is a place i'm called into yeah. uh, i expect that the fathers uh, and mentors must sustain the flexibility the spiritual understanding and the emotional stability to allow these people to be connected to those areas usually is very difficult yeah. i know i understand yeah. but yeah. they must be able to do that so yeah. these are some of the variations so just speaking a yes and a no answer may be destructive because oh, while you are establishing a point you yeah. may be endorsing some somebody that needs to run for his life you know, so, yeah. no so no, no. what you said is profound Thank i mean you. profound profound and, and the scripture we do not have many fathers yes just like we do not also have many sons mm. <laughs> That's true. so what what do you do apostle now let me make a disclaimer here the disclaimer here is that we're not making this a doctrine i just want to uh, you know ask apostle what he does privately to build capacity to build stamina so i would like to say what, what is an average day like for you what are those things that you do how how do you pray how do you study because i mean give it to you by the grace of god you have a unique insight into the world and thank you sir. Uh, i can relate uh, i mean with that it takes uh, hours of laboring yes. the word, praying, you know, one breaks into these things. And uh, so on every day, what, what do you do? And, and what I'm saying that is that without making a doctrine out of that, or trying to legislate that this is the only acceptable, and that's why I made that disclaimer. Um, people can also learn from that. What do you do? Because Paul also showed uh, Timothy and Titus the patterns, you know, I mean, this is what I do, this is how I handle this. So I want to look at spiritual capacity and stamina. What are those things that you do from time to time, you know, that give you this edge? Okay. Um, in, in truth, there are really no secrets, as it were. Okay. Um, the, the principles that govern spiritual growth and stamina uh, were seen in the life of Jesus yeah. and were seen in the early church yeah. primarily it is the ministry of the word and prayer that is responsible for building people Amen. it just comes in different variations yeah. but that is the basis and that from a child yeah. Yeah. thou has known the holy scripture, scripture that is able unto salvation, salvation. Yeah. so i number one i take my assignment seriously wow. i really take it seriously i have the privilege of um I've had encounters that continue to um, burn in my heart the seriousness of the unique privilege that God has given me to serve this generation. Yeah. And I understand that many people are depending on my spiritual growth and my spiritual health. Amen. So that in itself, primarily I'm driven by my love for God. Wow. And then I'm driven by the, the awareness of the responsibility, the demand that... Um, comes with this grace and with this calling yeah. so I, I spend time praying I spend time studying um, not just scriptures I study the body of Christ mm. is part of the apostolic responsibility wow. um, to be able to study the body of Christ and to help by the Spirit to define the coordinates of activities mm. the apostolic office is not about preaching Mm. is spiritual administration mm. you are responsible for mm. capturing the speakings of god as a portion to a generation within wow. a dispensation wow. and then to guide the coordinates of his execution so mm. that there is no error there is no balance imbalance mm. and to do that it will require you to have the open-heartedness to look at the body of christ mm. from a very broad spectrum wow. not from a critical you know position so i study the body of christ i listen to messages i just try to buy into the mind of what is happening in the body of christ yeah. um and then um I, I study a lot i'm a student of knowledge wow. i study scripture i study materials wow. uh, i build my spirit and then i spend time praying wow. i do i do thank you sir yes sir in addition to that yes, now please. i mean there's a question that just came out of that now we're in this COVID era now. Yes. What What do you think is the message of the Spirit for the church? And post-COVID period, 
uh, post-COVID era. What, yes. what, what do you think the spirit is? You said, you said it in passing in the message. But, but I want to, I know you're a man, just like you said, you have a, a deep a kind of a dealings with God. Yes, and sir. With respect to some of those things. What, what adjustment do you want ministers to make mm -hmm. going forward in the scheme of things? And how do you see everything about church ministry playing out in the days to come? Okay, thank you. Very, very powerful question. Yeah. In um, truthfully speaking, I believe that when you when you read Mark sixteen fifteen, yeah. um, it says, "Go ye into the world." So the mission is go ye. The location is the entire cosmos. Yeah. The assignment is to preach the gospel. Yeah. The object is creation, mm. but he never said how. Mm. So the only thing that was left flexible in the Great Commission is wow. the strategy. Mm. Um, that means that men and women of God must be able to trust God for grace wow. to, by the leading of the Spirit and consistent to Scripture, reinvent themselves to be able to be applicable to living in today's world wow. in terms of the dynamism and the flexibility that ministry requires, Amen. especially ministry among young people. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of rigidity and rituals that we may have to tone down mm. that were opinions of men, yeah. as it were. Otherwise, we'll not be able to reach, especially this generation. Wow. So there will be a lot, there will be need for a lot of flexibility. The truth mm. must remain. Uh, the pillars that represent the Christian faith must be unbending, yeah. but there must be a lot of flexibility. Yeah. And then, generally speaking, to encourage men and women of God, there are three things I want to say. Number one, we are men. It is a revelation. Uh, I think I preached that in Pastor Shola's church. Yeah. It's a revelation that um, our generation must be able to know we are men we make mistakes we are men we see things from different perspectives we are men we grow uh, the narrative that has been given about ministry uh, expects some level of perfection from ministers perfection in terms of flawlessness mm. and that is not going to happen yeah. time is a revealer of the humanity of all men and it does not have to be something evil or immoral or this just the weaknesses of men you know, um, I think that it is a revelation that most people, preachers must have the unashamedness to let people know that, look, I am a man who is helped by God. God does not use us because we are perfect. He uses us because we are broken. Mm. Wow. You see, so I think it's because the days that are coming, our generation no longer has the kind of sacredness and regard especially for preachers the way it used to be in the days of the fathers yeah, you know true. nobody would dare say certain things but now people are very vocal anybody can write a book go online say anything about anybody you know and those things will multiply in the days to come unfortunately mm. so the earlier we let people know that look we are men we are men that are helped by god mm. we continue to strive taking advantage of the grace of god to live lives that are worthy of emulation but then um, to know that uh, both the ones listening and those who are preaching, um, so that when a man, for instance, falls sick, you know, in as much as we believe in divine health, we trust God for these things, but yeah. there's nothing that should be, you know, should bring an issue of shame. Sometimes yeah. the ministers may have family problems, marital problems, and sometimes they can be in escalated proportions. Mm. It can so destroy them psychologically and take them a long time to build because members are surprised okay sometimes their children don't turn out to be the best representation of what their advocacy proposed and these are the kinds of loopholes that the devil is looking for and then he says you claim you are this you have raised people but look your child look this i think that um um this generation must give ministers a chance that these are human beings and they can eat you will be surprised right now that if you start eating here, <laughs> people will hashtag and say, Pastor, eating. And it will be a shock, like, I mean, do you eat? You know, sometimes people ask me those questions, and I understand what they are trying to say. But we must be very intentional about letting them know that, look, we are men. I can be hungry. 
I can eat. You know, Jesus did not hide his humanity. Yeah. He was hungry. He yeah. caused the fig tree. He flogged people in the temple. I mean, this is Jesus. Your Jesus, our Jesus. So the Bible said, let this mind be in you. It also includes the fortitude to just admit that, look, we're human beings and all of that. So that, that is my first message to men of God. But to balance it up, the second is we must know that there is a grace that provides for a level of excellence that is not human. Wow. So in as much as we admit that we are men, we must not be respectfully we live in a day and age that downplays on the anointing makes it look like what is there to have revelation what is there to be anointed is it really true that people are getting healed is it really true that people are getting blessed you know sometimes and it reduces ministry to just a social welfare program right. so if you want to be accepted globally it's just to the degree to which you conform mm. to a charity type work and yeah. that that is profitable but we are divine people Hallelujah. the excellency of the workings of the spirit in us and we should not be apologetic for the investment of the spirit upon our lives Amen. no matter what it is so in as much as we let people know that we are earthen vessels but we must finish that scripture that there is the excellency of power that is at work in us and so i want to encourage men and women of god that ordinary ministry in this day and age will only lead to frustration wow. and anger and jealousy and all the other fruits that come with mediocrity mm. there is space for everyone to press to a level of fire of power and grace wow. most of the dimensions that are given uh, uh, to individuals is for the edification of the body and through honor and meekness people can outsource these graces to improve their own lives so i think it's very important that ministers understand that there is a divine dimension to us and we must contend for it and carry out supernatural ministry and then finally i would want to say that um um i think it's very important also for ministers to understand that the best of us is only an effective member in the body that no single individual sustains the ability to have and communicate the whole counsel of god yeah. i appreciate god for what he's done in my life and what he's doing but i am only an effective minister and i must be able to i must intentionally let the body of christ know that no matter how accurate my alignment is i do not have the whole counsel of god and i must be able to uh, be faithful in the dimension communicated to me but as i mentor people i must be able to let them know that look you must expand your appetite to receive of other dimensions that are in christ in the body but may not be available in my life as far as dispensing uh, that dimension is concerned I, I, i'll say this because there is a bias and i taught that the last time during the revival series yeah, yeah. yes yeah. there is a bias that happens to men when god deals with them if god is calling me to the prophetic ministry most of my dealing will be centered around prayer discernment um the ministry of the spirit warfare deliverance uh the curriculum of my dealing will not capture things like administration excellence wow. networking mm -hmm. and all of that now if i come out from that experience and god allows that bias or that limitation to make me need other members of the body so but if i mentor people from the template of my limitation yeah. just because i have results in my area you will find out that administratively the church is down yeah. in terms of leadership and excellence it is down but in the area of the core delivery of the grace you are doing well yeah. but the people you mentor may not be able to embrace the whole counsel of god mm -hmm. so i must be able to say look i may not be graced in this area but this mm -hmm. area is useful for your life so yeah. i will be faithful in communicating mine and i will applaud mm -hmm. you when i see you open-heartedly searching out for the other dimensions that bring completion to the body wow. now i admit we are humans we just admitted it yeah. and sometimes it is difficult uh, especially men 
the male you know uh we, we are achievers yeah. and we like it when when we receive the applause that makes you know people sometimes send me a text and say apostle you are such a great man i've never had any man like you i understand what they are trying to say. that revelation remains sustained in their mind mm. because they will be very limited if the whole world has only joshua selman three things will happen the whole world will be in great error mm. number two the whole world will be very limited the whole world will only be effective in the area committed to me wow so it must start from me i must have the unashamedness to be able to salute what is happening in the body in a very vocal way like what you are doing what yeah. several men of god across the world are doing mm. uh now i know that in terms of our personal press into god and in terms of our level of seriousness our level of alignment and our accuracy of delivery there are differences yeah. and we must admit that yeah. uh, there are people who are serious there are people who are not serious unfortunately we can't generalize and clap for everybody mm. there must be room to challenge ourselves but then the truth still remains yeah. that um, we must be able to love the growth of the body of christ so much that we are happy when they grow even when that information does not come from us mm. Mm. Wow. remember the scribes and the pharisees yeah. Yeah. the issue was not healing the issue was who healed uh -huh. so they began to quarrel the person and you know uh, i should be happy today mm. if the healing does not come through my life or through my ministry yeah. i should love god and love him enough to say congratulations the yeah. most important thing is you are healed yeah, yeah, yeah. not to say why were you healed <laughs> not through me you know that kind of thing so and it doesn't mean we are bad it just means we are human we have to train ourselves into getting to a point of stability and emotional security wow. mm -hmm. so that we can allow people to be blessed people have caused people for listening to messages of other people people have caused people from attending conferences of other people now of course as a leader you are responsible for the growth and uh, the building of the people who are under your care and you want to know that the people are feeding properly yeah. and you want to unashamedly guide their health mm. but then sometimes those things go to the extreme and then it just becomes insecurity wow. Um, wow. you so so this this would be my three the threefold encouragement to to pastors powerful. Yes, sir. powerful thank you very much sir. my pleasure this is also a bit personal you are still single yes <laughs> how do you handle the issue of sisters and, and that is also a lesson for your ministers in the sense that I mean see how God has helped you uh, and I can relate with that because I also know one or two people who um, had a similar deal with God and by the grace of God uh, rose into the purpose of God for their lives before they married so for your ministers and, and for yourself someone like you how do you balance that side i mean to be focused to be single and how do you deal with sisters okay i appreciate um i, I think the issue of ladies and sisters and so on uh, is not limited to whether you are married or not is only minimized when you are married that, that's what i believe anybody who will be very honest you're right you sir. know uh -huh. so um i think the key is values mm. and principles wow yes the key is to be able to put values uh, because i would submit to you that um, many people who may have problem with sisters the ladies don't intentionally come to cause trouble they are just being ladies and uh, ladies will generally want a shoulder with all due respect to all the ladies following and the ladies around <laughs> you understand yeah. I, i'm not sure i'm not sure that uh, there are few ladies and 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 i think let's honor what the holy ghost is doing in the body i don't there are few ladies that will actually get up intentionally to say i want to destroy there are people like that but i think what happens is that the devil takes advantage of the vulnerability and the compassion of both the leader and the people involved because once you are emotionally connected to people for instance you have a sister or son in the church or the fellowship and you know about their background you know about what they've gone through you understand the peculiarity of their dealing and they've been open to you on that wise 
naturally you will be soft-hearted towards those people and even when they misbehave from the lens of what you know about them you will express a lot of compassion now that compassion can become dangerous that is why you must balance it with values values like um visitations counselings you know, ladies, you don't just invite sisters to say, come to my house, come and help me cook rice, cook beans. It may not be seen, but you are near Sodom. The Bible says when, 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 um, uh, what's his name? When Lot, when Lot left Abraham, he didn't go into Sodom. He stayed near Sodom. By the time Abraham would come to rescue Lot, he was in the middle of Sodom. So, um, sometimes uh, sometimes it's important to to just have standards and values i believe that when you have values and you are strict on it even though many people may misunderstand you but eventually you will get and, and it's more dangerous today because of the presence of social media yeah. you know um, there are all kinds of platforms that create connections and all of that. Yeah. Uh, and the devil is really out to see how he can discredit ministers and bring you know, people down through this avenue. So I yeah. think the key is to set very strict values. For instance, let me give maybe three or four. Generally, you can have a standard like, okay, you will not counsel a single sister alone for instance or in the night hmm. these are very good uh, principles and and now let, i want to say something respectfully and i don't mean to to uh, hurt the body or something i think there is a bit of balance that we need to put or addition to what we know to be the communication of the grace of god because i think that if not checked a bit that may be an area that the devil may take advantage of if the concept of the grace of god is not properly understood mm. it can become a license for licentiousness mm. you understand what i'm trying yes, to say I'm yes i don't mean yes, to yes i'm you know that sense of god does not condemn people but the consciousness of right and wrong is important we have traffic lights even though we are intelligent people mm -hmm. the traffic lights help to bring coordination yeah. so those kinds of things uh, because sometimes for as little as what i've said is for many people they can feel what is the meaning of that you know there is a grace of god that grants you grace to say no to this but uh, pragmatically speaking you are also a psychological being mm -hmm. and biology and psychology uh, and psychology plays its role in our lives yeah. so sometimes creating some of these standards will help us mm -hmm. um if 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 you are living with a lady for instance that you are not married with uh, you don't have to do anything wrong hmm. for it to destroy you wow the psychological torture of the imagery you are giving room to will frustrate your prayer life will frustrate your concentration will frustrate a lot of things hmm. and then it will it will give room for so many things so this generally my encouragement for people especially we young ministers and then most especially uh, people who are single uh, and not married yet i think that that the encouragement um, will be create standards trust god for grace it's easier said than done in all fairness but i think it's good to create standards and then number two be visionary in the bible vision helps people to stay on course wow. Wow. lack of vision is what sponsors distraction mm. there is a way you can be so visionary you look at your watch it's eight o'clock in the morning next time you check it is 10 p.m because you are so engaged you have sermons to prepare you have several things to do when you are excessively idle mm. you have to pick your phone from checking a sermon you go to a video you should not go to you see that from there before you know it until you are in sodom so these are some of the things we are talking about i think the key is standards and then number two build a community of like-minded people mm -hmm. having a kingdom community is the key to sustaining kingdom values wow. um working in isolation is very dangerous mm -hmm. 
a community life creates a healthy system of check and balance mm. it's, it's, so, so that so that 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 is very and then number three practice periodic retreats wow uh, I, I i am shocked in all honesty at the fact that people can be busy in ministry for a very long time and not have i'm not talking of the usual weekly retreat or these just two hours where most of it you are sleeping i mean a serious <laughs> heartfelt retreat from the depth of your heart yeah. where you stay with god and when you are with god don't tell lies don't go to god as a man of god you go to god sincerely <laughs> now it's easy for you to clap for me as joshua selman and so it's only god that knows the truth about me yeah. so when i go to god the one who i cannot hide i say okay god please deal with me and god can say okay be careful lust is growing in your heart here pride is growing in your heart here mm -hmm. maybe um pressures are mounting on you and maybe your prayer life is not as effective as that and i say okay god thank you supply the grace for the next level the the key to being sustain the ministries to be truthful to yourself very truthful to yourself and when you go before god be as sincere and honest if you go to god as mog and uh, you go to god as a colleague in ministry uh, very soon things will go bad you must when i go to god i go with an open heart and i go very sincerely search my heart truthfully oh god Hallelujah. and anything god tells me whether i have proof for it or not i believe it if i go before god now and god says you are an arm robber i believe him mm. i will not say where, where, whose money did i steal i will start rolling on the ground and say show me mercy before i disappoint myself mm. because you know god does not have future everything is his realm is now so when god speaks some of what he's saying will not be in your now Wow. but it's a possibility that is enshrined in you like mm. a dna mm. so you kill it before it destroys you in the future mm. the key is honesty that transparency mm. i think we need to be more transparent human beings don't have that fortitude to show wow. us mercy mm. so we must go to the one who is able to take us just as we are and build us so that would be my thank you very much sir. i just have two more questions or yes, so, so i can wrap this up um this is also a bit uh, also controversial. Okay. Um, but I just wanted to shed light to use this opportunity. So in the last uh, two, three weeks, there was one of your videos making rounds. I know possibly you've heard about it. Um, you know, we have some boys on the, <laughs> on the social media who just, they're stalking traders to attack ministers. So you were talking about uh, the spiritual impact of Lagos and Abelkuta. And you said, um, if God is going to do something significant in the lives of people, I don't know how you actually oh, put it. Oh, I understand. That he must. Uh, so some people start fighting that. So I just want you to lay that to rest oh. once and for all. Because I, I also saw, just like you said, I observed what is going on in the body. I saw that uh, some of... Um, uh, your supporters, some of the people also were confused because I saw the reactions and the counter reactions and, and uh, I just, f I mean, see this as an opportunity to just clarify the matter. Okay. So what exactly are you trying to communicate? Okay. So that people will have that uh, and we just lay it to rest. It, it's important. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm not on social media. Yeah, so that's, that's why. Most of all these things that I don't know. But, I know but, but, but two things, number yeah. one, you see, um, it is not it is not necessarily the correctness or the wrongness of what i've said that is the issue mm. it is the fact that when you seek for truth with an open heart you will find it if you don't find it with me you will still find it in the body yeah so this is what i'm saying yeah uh, let's assume that i'm totally wrong and everything i've said is nonsense no problem does that really become a basis mm. for you to be in error there are many more accurate voices than me in the body yeah. and if your goal is really growth the holy spirit is more loving he's too loving to allow one man's error destroy so many people mm -hmm. so you, you have to probe the motive behind those things yeah. Yeah. we are men and so i'm before addressing it no yeah. matter how wrong let's assume that it's even the whole sermon that is nonsense <laughs> if i die today joshua selman 
or if all my messages are edited completely from the internet it's just the unique expression of the grace of god upon my life that will be missed spiritual growth will continue so i don't think i should be such a big deal thank god for the influence that i have but the when people begin to attack a man of god uh for instance in a way and coin out maybe sentences phrases and all of that yeah, yeah. no the holy spirit is speaking through a verse now I'm, I'm saying in an instance where, because even if this is wrong this will not be the last wrong thing i will say <laughs> That, that, that is the honest truth you, you you get the point now doctors people die from the hands of doctors every day and we go to the hospital and call them doctors we call them professors we give them awards they receive nobel prizes i mean be fair on men of god now where there is a problem is where when the man of god stands as an absolute authority yeah. and now says what i'm saying is absolute don't listen to anybody again now that's that's a problem yeah. anybody who knows me from the inception of ministry i have always been open and truthful to tell yeah. people look i am only an effective member of the body of christ number yeah. two i am also a student in the school of the spirit yeah. 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 and when i communicate my dealings i communicate them based on several things now yeah correcting let me use the opportunity to say this and then i'll now address yes, the sir. issue yeah. correcting the body of christ is an office mm -hmm. wow. just because you observe error or imbalance or mistake does not give you the credence mm. because this is the mistake all around pulpits yeah. are full of everybody trying to correct everybody no mm -hmm. correcting the body of christ is an, office. an office and the first requirement of that office is love wow not power not revelation yeah. you see that our children will edit what we are calling rema today uh -huh. the same way we are editing the revelation of the fathers as at the time they received respectfully speaking fathers like papa Hagin, when they wrote what they wrote you know i remember papa Hagin saying something like um uh, the anointing of the spirit only flows through a cloth or material I remember years ago when I was in ministry, I asked somebody to go and stand at the end of the wall and I touched the wall from here and they went to carry him on the ground. Hmm. And I said, the wall is not a piece of paper. I was just trying to show the excellency. Now, if I attack Papa Hagin, I'm stupid because I'm growing and our children will edit what we now see. Hmm. It wow. says this present truth. Um so i don't know who the gentlemen are who edited that but the first thing i want to tell them is i love you i do not believe whoever you are the pastor or the uh, media people i don't believe that you are intentionally trying to maybe challenge me or this i love you with all my heart and i know that you are probably doing your best that you know to be a contribution to the body of christ and i salute you for the courage to even be able to come there that's number one i i also salute you for the opportunity to be able to detect what you think is an area of controversy my only observation may be that next time is wiser and better to make effort to reach the man of god yeah. to try to say okay sir you preach this and while listening to you i made an observation would mm. you want to shed light mm. if the man demonstrates rebellion mm -hmm. and demonstrates hard-heartedness yeah. then it now qualifies you to say okay look i think this is rebellion because the the person whoever is saying that does not have both the moral and the spiritual credence to to vet all of that yeah. Yeah. It, with all humility most likely someone else who loves me will challenge you and say where are your results <laughs> and you see it's not whether you are for me or against me no mm being for me and attacking the man does not profit me it yeah. will still hurt the body generally yeah. so we must love the growth of the body more than our reputation yeah. i don't have a problem being criticized yeah. i don't have a problem Same looking man. controversial yeah. no 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 no. Yeah. i'm a man mm -hmm. if i die you only cry for seven days <laughs> try to raise me back to life eventually you throw me and life continues so i think that um we will, there are many messages from the most accurate of any man 
there are messages that you may pick certain things that you feel based on the mentorship you have received mm -hmm. or based on your doctrinal standpoint it is an error yeah. i think it's wise and better that when you do want to administer those things it must be very vocal that the love of god is seen in you yeah. and you must also be sure that what you are saying is not something you will regret tomorrow wow. yeah. Yeah. because we see in part so in a bid to correct somebody do not get into error yourself but as part the you know is the cross of the apostolic ministry yes, i mean yes. it, it will be very childish for a man of god who has a measure of influence to be surprised when you're you know apostle you're, you're speaking i'm sorry for cutting you people wonder also why i entertain some things on my social media andrews yes you know i preach i say and people come and you see me having conversation with them, you know. But all I just say is that don't use rude language, don't be abusive. Let's discuss. Well, and most times, you see, Pastor, yeah. most times the people who try to challenge different men of God, the yes. truth of the matter is that um, for most of them, I think it's just the frustration that comes mm -hmm. with not getting sufficient results. Wow. In all honesty. And when that frustration becomes outspoken, mm -hmm. they secretly seek for a chance to find something that becomes a, a you know an anchor to authorize and they will find it. You see, there is a difference between coming from a standpoint of love. Yeah. You see that? And yeah. coming from a standpoint where you are trying to show that, oh, you are clapping for this man. Let me tell you, he's not worth that clap because of this. So, yeah. uh -uh. there are many ways to correct. Yeah. The goal is to try to tell a generation yeah, that's you are hyping this honor too much. So, you delay it, which yeah. is unnecessary because honor is a grace. <laughs> There's a difference between honor and respect. Mm. You see, you can respect yourself, mm. but you can't honor yourself. Mm. Honor is conferred upon you by an authority higher than you. Wow. You see, so um, these are some of the things. But, but for the thing I said, I remember the statement that he said yeah. I made. Yeah. In a pastor's uh, uh, church, I will not want to mention his name. He's a man I respect dearly. Wow. So we're talking on doors. Yeah. And so I was speaking about portals and the prophetic implication of portals. Yeah. And I was saying that there are certain territories, the way we have mineral resources, yeah. there are certain territories that when God wants to announce you, he will cause your feet to make contact with those territories. Yeah. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Now, I didn't teach it as a doctrine. Yeah. If I did not teach a thing as a doctrine, Paul will say, I say this as a man. Yeah. You are subject to your interpretation of it. And I, everything I said in that sermon is not wrong. So if you think this is wrong or your revelation is higher than what I've said, just jump it and be edified by the remaining things that are there. You know? Uh, and, uh, and if you have to edit the video, maybe for your consumption, my videos are free online, you can edit that part as far as your consumption. I, I, I think it's too small. It was a statement that was not more than, uh, you know, yes. all, all of that. But, but for, for all the people, let me say this, for all the people who love me and may try to attack that person, leave our apostle, no, 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 please don't be hard on them. Give people a chance to be wrong too. He's wow. wrong is wrong so if if i am wrong and he corrects me in a wrong way yeah. let us show the excellency of what the love of christ can do yeah. so at first i salute his courage to make the observation whatever observation and second i pray for him that he will not reap the harvest the way he has sown the seed it's not it's, it's not even just one person that, that's what i'm saying it doesn't matter of course Whoever. only god knows the number of uh, yeah. it's not these things you see the sacrifice of the fathers should teach us lessons mm. there is a level of success you cannot get to and have everybody clap for you yeah. and it is important mm. it's not it's not it is important that that variety of observation is there so you cannot you cannot only love people who agree with you yeah. no people have a right to disagree yeah. and yeah. it helps people to grow 
because yeah. when people see where they disagree with you or your revelation it gives them room to go and study yeah. and it helps the people you are leading to be Bereans themselves yeah. Yeah. you yeah. see yeah. so probably that uh, whatever it is now may have made somebody who listens to me and loves me so much to say look let me now settle down and listen yeah. if I make a mistake or I say something wrong to the body of Christ believe me but I'm not too proud and arrogant to say body of Christ this is how I saw it yesterday. Now I've seen Clara. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. And all yeah. of that. No, yeah. there's nothing to be ashamed of. We're yeah. advocating a dimension of God that is very real. We're not acting. You see that. Yeah. Um, so that was what I was trying to say. Yeah. That spoke about Abe Okuta and Let this. Us, yeah. And um, I, still, I still believe that that conviction is largely true. Uh, it, it never comes above the authority of Scripture. But I am telling you from a prophetic standpoint that some of those truths hold but at the same time i respect the revelation of everyone you know i don't know what god has shown them and maybe i will learn from them tomorrow Amen. i'm sure i would like to listen to the message of the people who did that post to hear what god has shown them i'm a learner and i'm a student Amen. i'm sure that uh, tomorrow i'll hear what god has said and i will be more than grateful to tell them thank you and i'm not just saying it yeah. in a sarcastic way i'm yeah. saying it sincerely if i study their message today and i find out that god has shown them a dimension higher than what he has shown yeah. me with all humility i will receive it i will adjust and i will thank them you see all the people who are under my spiritual influence would have been blessed yeah. by them the yeah. only challenge and this is the mess a message to the body of christ do not find joy in bringing others down mm. to show you are up mm. oh, wow. you see Wow. Uh, is is it does not it does it will make people hate you because it will end up creating controversy the yeah. people that like that man of god or that woman of god will end up attacking you yeah. in honor of the person they love yeah. so it becomes like for uh, for paul and for yeah. apollos mm -hmm. if the whole world stands against me to throw those people now and criticize them mm -hmm. um the body of christ has not profited yeah. so i must love the body more than my and my ego this is a dimension of fatherhood and leadership we are introducing by god's grace to the body that we must love the body more than our reputation mm -hmm. i'm a human being i can make mistakes yeah. you see that i can i can preach something that based on the light i saw at the time i preached yeah. i probably didn't get it right no problem the most important thing is that we must approach ministry as to when they are sincerity to have the fortitude to come and preach yeah. and then say well i appreciate what you have seen but i think there is a higher light like yeah. this yeah. so submit to it yeah. rather than than coming online and criticizing why don't you do a little podcast a video <laughs> of the say okay apostle or any man of god for that matter this is what you said and i don't agree with this and since I don't agree with this, this is what I think is the correct position. Let me do a little Bible study for you. Ten minutes. Send it to your media team and say, let this be a gift to apostle with love from me. A fellow apostle, a fellow apostle <laughs> or prophet in the body of Christ. Believe me, if I receive that kind of video and I listen to it, it will take me back to my Bible. And I look and I see that, wow, okay, it's true. What this guy said. I didn't see the light i will first call him and i'm the kind of person who can acknowledge them publicly mm, mm. I'm, I'm not ashamed to do that yeah. i will say look pastor so 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 or prophet so or apostle this or whoever it is thank you very much for contributing to my spiritual growth yeah. and thank you for helping me align in a greater sense of accuracy mm. so that now i can teach the people you understand so yeah. I, I think yeah. that that's how we should approach it in the body okay. not to attack and do it doesn't you, you, you um, have nailed it thank you and, and i'm so happy of course so we, we've never talked about this and you just said exactly what we do that, that's how we approach the matter yes we don't and that's why you know some of the people that look to act by time you give them the opportunity of listening to them a lot of them are friends now oh yes in fact, yeah. we even go ahead be on facebook to say this is my phone number call me let's have a it brings this perspective and you bring your perspective because what i found out over the years is that people don't listen to the whole message they just take one minute out that's right mm. <laughs> and at times if you don't listen to the flow and you just take that one minute out you take it out of context that's true and you begin to and you see some of the people that promote some of these things 
don't share the entire message. They just take a clip out. And they're like, oh, he's wrong here. How can he say this? How can he say that? And I begin to fight it. Let's learn from what he just said now. And I think he has and, and, and Let, let me just say lesson. this, just a minute or so yeah. on that. The thing is that some of these people that look like enemies or look like controversial people, yeah. there is just their approach that yeah, may be wrong. Approach, some yeah. of them may be very well-intentioned people. Yeah. In fact, you should give them and believe that they will intentionally get up. Of, of course, you, you cannot rule out the fact that there may be few who <laughs> may just... But, but I, I want to give the benefit of doubt. We are yeah. believers. Yeah. And a believer is not just one who has faith in God. A yeah. believer is one who walks by love. Yeah. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, not when you preach well, and so on and so forth. So I think that there is no problem with that. Yeah. Um, I will want to encourage those people. Let me say this. Um, when you feel that um, my message or any man of God's message that you respect, there are perspectives in it that you don't agree with, that's all right. Yeah. Don't think it is a shock. It is not a spirit talking. Mm. It's a man who is talking as inspired by the spirit. Hallelujah. We see in part, we can make mistakes or you can be the one making mistakes. Yeah. You know, and all of that. So in any case, the key is to sustain the love. Yeah. In fact, I would recommend this. If you think a man of God has made a mistake that you think can be misleading to the body of Christ, don't come on social media to attack the person. Yeah. Rather, this is my proposition. Take it as Joshua Selman's proposition. Make a video of what you think is correct and send it to him. Or do a Bible study, a little yeah. PDF of a Bible study a correct exegesis of the truth and then i want to encourage men and women of god when people challenge you sometimes they may challenge you in a harsh way they may go on to say a lot of other things that have no business to you know they can challenge you and attack you and now start attacking your church attack your members be calm don't fight back and encourage those who love you too to not fight back in a you know some of those things may not help but I think it's wise, do a little Bible study. Yeah. And you can say something like, okay, man of God, I appreciate you for the teaching. I listened to this teaching or that one. I appreciate you. However, you said A, B, C. And I think based on my level of growth, I think that I have my reservations. Don't say you are wrong. You are misleading the body of Christ. Yeah. This error is bad. <laughs> By what standard do you think you are right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you see that now so yeah. so that that's my encouragement in fact apostle yes. i applaud you have thank you you have just prescribed the remedy and let him the heart hear hear what the spirit is saying to the churches final question sir yes let me thank you again I mean, because <laughs> I, I i i i'm not sure whether you have done this before putting you on not seat and uh, asking all these questions and um what would you be your advice for uh, startups in ministry? Those who are just about to start their work, what kind of uh, things should they be doing? And um, let me also say this up front. Apostle, we can't finish this today. <laughs> so in front of the whole body of Christ, we are requesting that we do this again as we are led by the Spirit. And as, as uh, I don't, like you said, it can't be a one of Yes, that's But true. we also understand the uniqueness of other things God is doing with you. So, those who are starting out, uh, what what should they do? Uh, what should be the emphasis? Especially those who are just about to start out. Okay. Or just who are just recently okay. uh, started their work. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, let me just um, steal out this time to really honor and appreciate you. Thank yeah, you so sir, much. I do not take for granted this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Two things. Um, for those, I expect, for everyone who wants to start ministry i expect that he should currently be connected to a body of believers of some sort maybe a pastor in a church and all of that the first thing is do not start ministry just because you think you observe something in the current church you are in that needs to be corrected oh, wow it is it is a dangerous motivation it will look inspiring at that point but you'll be frustrated mm. eventually let me say it again that means that um, let's assume, unfortunately, back, let's assume the gentleman who said those things about me was a member of my church or my ministry. Just because you detect error, imbalance, and a number of faulty things mm -hmm. 
in a church you shouldn't just in anger say look i don't pray this way i don't sing this way i don't preach this way god is no more here you hear people say that and i think i need to leave and go and create somewhere where god is now you will succeed for a while but it's like you are drinking poison and expecting someone else to die wow you see that so the motif and the motivation must be serious and truthful I, I will tell you that a number of ministries don't start necessarily because the call or the timing was right wow. they are angry at something or someone who did something within the ministry some of them may say i was not given enough platform to preach wow. some of them may say i was maybe they are downplaying and and, and they may be right sincerely speaking in, mm. in 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 some cases but whatever the issue is um leaving a ministry with a um a, a narrative as though god is not here this i think you people are not accurate i've seen more i've seen further it's a dangerous seed you are sowing wow. because the harvest is always greater than the seed so that's wow. dangerous mm -hmm. so i will tell ministers who want to start up be sure that you are starting ministry because there is a real mandate upon your life mm -hmm. and there is a message mm -hmm. you have a message that is independent of what is right or wrong in your current ministry wow. you see your message cannot be to correct what your pastor said that is wrong mm. that's not a mandate that is long enough for ministry wow. that's number one number two is that um you must ensure that where you are under an authority now let me say this pastors and ministers prophets and leaders are human beings just because they are anointed of god they have emotions it is unfair to tear down a man's ministry paint the man bad you see that try to you know many pastors around the world and and pastor Dele, i'm sure that you may many people may have spoken to you on this and let it be an encouragement lovingly speaking to the body of christ many people are bleeding today in ministry because those who left their ministry the way they left it was not a good model you see some yeah. of them stole things and left mm. some of them um carried out luciferian attitudes they <laughs> go around carrying about a third of the people indoctrinating the people painting the pastor maybe his wife maybe the church leaders painting them bad painting them black and then you know contrasting all of that and it doesn't matter whether they are right or wrong when you want to leave a ministry there are ethics number one understand that it took a long time to build that number two understand that there are innocent people in the ministry who are at a level of spiritual infancy mm. you must love their growth more than your reputation wow mm. don't be like the samaritan mm. who left somebody the priest who left the samaritan dying to go and preach he was on his way to go for a program and he saw a samaritan dying and he left that person there to go and do ministry you want to go and do ministry and you don't kill somebody else be before you are going and then number three let me tell you this no matter what it is how right or wrong a man of god is when that man of god has invested in your life and invested in your growth and poured himself or herself honor the history even if you don't honor the future wow honor the fact that that man or that woman of god poured their lives their time their investment into you mm -hmm. and to do that don't destroy uh excuse me the ministry or the platform don't do that when you do that you will not succeed yourself mm -hmm. You, you, you see that now so i think this is the template many people have when they are passionate about going to start ministry or start whatever the narrative they tear down this church in this church they do abc some come up with all kinds of visions god showed me my pastor is going to hellfire my you know god showed me that he left this church years ago don't say that no it's wrong don't yeah. it's like you are trying to be tall by cutting the head of everybody ah. it's wrong hmm. so i think that the, 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 the that's the second thing i would tell ministers yeah. give enough time especially if you play um key roles in yeah. that ministry yeah. 
you see that it yeah. is wise to give enough time so that the church can make adjustments Adjustment, yeah. you see I, I think it's i think it's unfair to just wake up and then maybe you are the one who conducts services and then all of a sudden the yeah, pastor is not there again or the prophet or whoever is not there again or the accountant is not there again yeah. and then you say I, i've gone please mm. it's not a good thing yeah. you will so wear well um, um what you reap yeah what you i mean you will reap, reap what, what you, you sow. sow i meant to say mm. you see so that that's a very important thing um many pastors are bleeding terribly because of the way people left mm. and the trouble is that those people will go and find mm. because these are spiritual patterns yeah. and then they will mentor other people too in light of their mistakes and all the things they are doing so i think it's a correction for the body of christ yeah, and then i want to also talk to fathers and mentors and leaders the truth is that there are people who are in your church and with you for seasons mm. and the truth is that we must i know it's not easy we're human beings mm. and if you have your way you want everybody to stay with you forever but the kingdom will not advance that way yeah. there are times when the 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 people would have exhausted their stay and the pastors and the leaders the prophets apostles must sustain the the emotional flexibility this is not even about spirituality yeah. the the psychological strength to say look i know that your time is over here and all of that i bless you and release you because there have been instances where people sincerely want to go and they follow the most respectful way and in anger some of the pastors they they may laugh with them in the open but they will curse them in the and secret say all them. kinds of things and look forward to their downfall <laughs> and if and when they fall they will now say you see i said it i think we must love god's agenda more than ourselves yeah. and all of that so as themselves must be careful so that they do not unnecessarily antagonize people because of the call of god upon their life i think i think that is a fair balance and then the third thing is um the truth is that ministry is not something to do in a hurry just because you think you are prepared does not mean you are prepared mm. uh -huh. you see the each to want to start ministry for many people is just the instincts for leadership mm. that is not coordinated properly yeah. that each to want to be the the superintendent mm. or that each and, and sometimes i will say this respectfully um sometimes we have to be careful that's why a minister must be careful if you're married may god bless you but those who are not married you have to be careful the kind of person you bring into your life because sometimes marriage can affect some of these things you you marry somebody that is so obsessed for power and it happens both ways well for the man and the woman depending on who the anointing is upon yeah. and they can push themselves into this obsession i think we can have our own thing and the man or the woman as the case may be may move in honor of their spouses and get into trouble sometimes it happens it is rare but then it, it does happen wow. and so i think that that is something that is very very important to watch against those two but um even when you you think you are ready to start up Mm. i will tell people don't start by opening a church mm. to just put hand bills and say hey i have a new ministry mm. the name of my ministry is abc assembly or abc um cathedral come sunday service will open from next week that's not how ministry starts every ministry starts as a house of prayer wow. it's in the bible it is the pattern mm. so you start by investing in prayer investing in prayer will ward off the forces of darkness mm -hmm. take charge of the spiritual climate wow. and prayer begins to bring the people who are connected to your grace who will now become leaders eventually Amen. the first set of people who come to your ministry are not workers they are leaders mm -hmm. they may not come as leaders they will come like those who came to david in the cave of adulam yeah. weak in debt dejected so it is now your assignment to discern and start to build them Amen. but i will tell this finally it is important to prepare for ministry anybody wow. who is really in ministry knows that it takes the grace of god yes, otherwise sir. one day you will even collapse yourself you know <laughs> and and all of that so that would be my encouragement sir. wow 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 yes. wow wow wow